Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, welcome to the uh, new lecture of uh, multimedia technology and application. So it's a continuous part of a data compression part two. So in this we will study about half man coding. So in the last in the previous lecture we studied about a run length method. So here now we are studying about half man coding. So both are uh, related to the uh, data compression. So half main coding is assigns shorter codes to symbols that occur more frequently. For example, we have a text file they choose only five character like we have a text A, B, C, D, E. Before we can assign bit pattern to each character, so we assign each character a weight. N need to be assigned a weight for a character based on its frequency of a use. So in this example, assume that the frequency of the character is shown in the table. Let's see. Character we have A, B, C, D, E. And the frequency for the character is like for A17, for B12, C12, D27 and E is 32. So what we are going to do, we are going to find out the weight of the characters. Then we can also find out the bits of a character as well. So let's come the this slide if we have a b c d e and a have their weight b have a have their frequency b have their frequency and so on okay so what we are going to do if you can see b c are equal so so once those uh, frequencies are equal to so edit out so b c are equal so it may be 24 okay so now 24 so 17 and 24 so instead we can also we do a b c d so make it together it will be equal to 47 then what we can do we have a 27 and 32 so make it so a 27 with 32 okay then what we can do it then we can add all of it add it so this was 41 this was 559 so make it one another and edit both of it so the total frequency or the weight of this is 100 okay so this is the basically half man method where we can assign the frequency for a character then we know once if we have any repetition anything and we can remove it so at the end at the receiver end or after decomposition what we need to have we need to have a hundred value so for that so we cannot uh, we can't lose the data So a character code is found by starting at the root and following the branches date lead to date character the code itself is the bit value of each branch on the path taken in sequence now you can see let's see we had a for a once we have a, a for a we have a zero and zero what does it mean that zero and zero like we said about the zero and zero for a b we have a zero one and zero then for a c we have zero one one so for a it will be like zero zero this is your direction then for a b it, it will be your direction then for a C it will be your direction so th this is going to be your code now then for a D it's going to be a direction and for a E it's going to be direction so what you did you match your codes now so initially what we did we just assigned the 0 and 1s so once we assign 0 0 then you can say okay 0 1 why where we can use 1 where we can use it so it's up to you it's like not be a uh, fixed thing but we can we use it out so this is a b c d e and it's our final code so now coming to the encoding initially we, uh, once we have a bits for a bit or uh, once we have a character so for a character we need to do some encoding so encoding let us see how to encode text using the code for our five character figure like this we have a text a e e 
B A E C D E A. So this is our tags, and we need to make some encoding now. So what does encoding mean? Encoding mean for A B C D E. So we need to add the bits. We need to add a code. So for A we have a zero zero. So and for A B C D E we have already this one. So once we have a E for A we have a one one. Then we have a A A zero zero. Then we have a E. Then have a one one. Then we have a B. A B zero one zero. So what you can do? We will add all, or we can combine all the encoding bits for the text and this is this will be our final result and we can transfer this code to the somewhere else then what we can do after decoding so it's encoding and we, we transfer it then come to the decoding so the reception or the receiver has a very easy job in decoding the data it receives now you can see half main code now so half main code this is our uh, code which transfer from a sender side so we have a this value so what we can do in the first so we have a, a b c d e so we are going to differentiate or we are going to be uh, separate all the character from the bits or from the code so initially we have a one one and we know what is one 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 is equal to a then we have a zero zero so so what we are going to do we are going to just decode this data and so you know once you are decoding if you can uh, take it from this point or this point both are the same so if you can do this from so initially we have a one one so one one is coming one one is equal to e okay it will be e then we have a zero zero okay zero zero was equal to a so it will be a and so on so it after decoding towards the receiver end we will have our original data we will have our original data so what we did so it basically a few things so what we did a compression so in a compression we just remove the redundance space or redundance bit or we can say that we just remove the silence mode of the data because once you are talking so there will be a silence mode in the silent mode we have some bits as well so we just replace or remove date uh, bits from the data so now coming to the uh, lossy compression so lossy compression method our eyes and ears cannot distinguish subtitle changes mean once we have a lossy compression so we cannot see or we cannot hear it so in such cases we can use a lossy data compression method this method are cheaper and so they take less time and space when it come to the sending million of a bit per second for image and videos several methods have been developed using a lossy compression techniques so initially jpeg jpeg is about joint photographic export group encoding is used to compress picture and graphics uh, mpeg moving picture export group encoding is used to compress a video and then mp3 for a audio compression so we have the these three method we need where we can compress the data but in a lossy medium in a lossy compression okay it's about lossy now so coming to the image compression about jpeg encoding so you know about a jpeg giant photographic export group an image can be represented by a two dimension array table of a picture element or a pixel so a grayscale picture of let's see we have saying is three zero seven two double zero pixel represented by these bits and a color picture represented by these bits okay so it's just about the uh, jpeg encoding that for a grayscale we have how many pixels we have or in the form of a bit how many bits we have so the redundancy can then be removed using one of the lossless compression method we studied previously like whatever we have a block image now we have a images so first of all what we can do we have a three phase of jpeg initially dcd dcd is about 
cosine transform discrete cosine transform is about a, a cosine uh, function then after a co cosine we have a quantization we make a quantization then what we can do we have a loss less compression so this three phases need to be uh, pause for a block images and at that we have a compressed image so a compressed image will be in the form of a bit so this is basically a block diagram for the jpeg what how jpeg is going to be work so just one thing about a cosine function just keep in mind we have just used a dct because cosine function is one of the and that concept need to be studied in, in a separate lecture so video compression like uh, in video you know about m page compression m page compression know about moving picture expert group method is used to compress a video so in a principle a motion picture is a rapid sequence of a set of a frame in which each frame is a picture so you know about now this picture pixel frame so all these things are the same but just having a in different form in other words a frame is a special combination of a pixel and the video is a temporal combination of frames that are signed one after another so hope you guys know about this concept the frame is the combination of a pixel video is the combination of a frame and it's going to be sent one by one so compression video then means partially compression each frame and temporary compression a set of a frame so hope this is about a uh, concept behind the uh, mpeg encoding which shows that that how mpeg is going to be work and how it's the combination of a pixel and frames and images so we have some other definition for a special compression the special compression of each frame is done with the jpeg or a modification of it each frame is a picture that can be independently compressed then we have a temporal compression in temporal compression the different frame are removed when we watch television for example we receive 30 frame per second however most of the consecutive frame are almost the same for example in a static scene in which someone is talking most frame are the same except for the segment around the speaker lips so which change from one frame to the next we have a concept about audio compression audio compression can be used for a speech or a music for a speech we need to compress a 64 kilohertz digitized signal while for a music we need to compress a 1.411 megahertz signal so two categories of a technique are used for audio compression predictive encoding and perceptual encoding then we have a uh, predictive encoding in a predictive encoding the difference between a sample or encoded instead of encoding all the sample value this type of compression is normally used for a speech so several standard have been defined for gsm and so on and same like for the perceptual encoding like mp3 so the most common compression technique used to create cd quality audio is based on this perceptual encoding technique this type of audio needs at least 1.411 megabit per second so the uh, this was a uh, short uh, definition for a different compression so hope uh, you guys um, learned it from a video and hope it will also help you so once you have any questions so you kindly you can ask so i will try to answer it so thank you for your time see you in the next lecture